So my name is Chris Lee. I'm the CTO of Include Health. We transform access to healthcare through web AI and specifically in the physical therapy domain. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so uh, neuromuscular care, uh, which is anything that requires, uh, you know, uh, hips, knees, elbows, shoulders, back, neck, and anything where you're normally going to have some kind of physical therapy to help you through it, um, that impacts about 127 million people in the United States. And being that there's about 346 million people in the United States right now, that means about a little over one in three people are currently in need of physical therapy. Now, I'd ask people to raise their hand if they need physical therapy, but that would be a HIPAA violation and with this PHI. <laughs> So we're not going to do that, <clears throat> but in your head, you know that if I cut this room in thirds, about a third of you should be talking to me about your care. Uh, the other thing is, uh, we all talk about healthcare being broken and very expensive and those kind of things, but, but uh, uh, neuromuscular care is about a $60 billion cost in our healthcare system, uh, followed by heart disease at about half that, and followed by cancer, which is a little over a third of that. So if you think about that cost, we need to drive that cost down from a healthcare perspective. So we didn't start out in physical therapy. We started out uh, by our founder and CEO, uh, Ryan Eater, who was a, a University of Cincinnati uh, industrial design major. And he went to a gym and was working out and saw a man come in with a wheelchair. And that man came in with a wheelchair and a bag of equipment to help him do workouts. So Ryan took that as his industrial design thesis. Like, how can we solve that problem? And he started working on this design for a machine. And that machine was aimed at being accessible to someone in a wheelchair, someone with cerebral palsy, someone who would be missing limbs, but still wants to be able to work out and still wants to be able to get better. So uh, Ryan began designing this machine. And uh, over the years, he won a bunch of awards, including a Dyson Award. And that Dyson Award uh, attracted the US Air Force, who was interested in that machine as well. So Ryan ended up building that machine. So that machine was being able to be used in physical therapy, as well as in performance situations in the Air Force. So uh, the machine was great. You could come up to the machine. You didn't have to pull pins and put pins into weight stacks. You didn't have to change anything. It would like let you uh, guide it through. It was all zero balance, so there was no effort in order to configure the machine for the exercises you wanted to do. But really what we wanted to do was build a system that allowed a, a, either a physical therapist or a trainer to be able to put a workout together. And then when that person came up to the machine, the machine would guide them through how to configure the machine. It would count the reps. Every time they'd pull on one of the, the uh, arms, we would use an encoder and we'd be able to count your, your rotations and like how much force you're using and all those kinds of sort of outcomes that a PT or a trainer would want to capture. So we wanted to bring all that back. So uh, now a, a therapist would be able to prescribe a workout specifically to you. Uh, you would go to the machine. You would do that workout, and then all that data would come back to the therapist. That therapist could look at your results, adjust your workout, and then be able to, the next time you came to the machine, it would be updated with that information. It's awesome. Then, because no one's ever happy, the therapist asked us, well, your platform's great, but it's this 900-pound functional trainer. We've got all this other equipment in the gym that we want to be able to digitize. Can you help us? So our team went to work and we built a sensor platform. So these little black sensors, we could put it on any device that was in a gym and then we can, we can calibrate that to that device and then we can count reps and then we would understand how much weight you're doing and we can capture outcomes. Uh, then 
because no one's ever happy. Uh, the, they wanted all the rest of the equipment in the gym. So rowers, bikes, treadmills, you know, any other kind of piece of equipment in the gym to be able to be prescribed in that workout and essentially give someone a circuit to go through. And as they went from machine to machine to machine, it would be bringing that data back, let the PT or trainer see what was going on, adjust those plans, and then that would, that would go forward. Now the Air Force also used this. So on the performance side, so we had both therapy and performance running on this platform at the same time. All right. Then the Air Force asked, well, there's a whole bunch of other things that happen around either both therapy and performance that have nothing to do with machines. So with uh, Children's Hospital in Cincinnati, they had built a $30 million mocap capture lab to study human motion. So being able to have 30 um, mocap cameras around, they would digitize that, they'd have athletes come in, they would put the little balls on them like you see in movies, and then as that person moved, it would capture all of that data. They would bring that back and then they would, they would synthesize that data and figure out human motion, those kind of things. Uh, so they came to us and said, can you add that to your platform and make it so we don't have to build a $30 million machine or room? So we did. We built a LiDAR camera system. So we'd be able to take a LiDAR camera, map the human body that was standing in front of us, have them do yoga, have them do push-ups, have them do sit-ups, have them do whatever we needed them to do. We would track that data. We would count reps. We would tell them how long that they were doing those exercises. And then we would give that back to the coach or therapist. So this is great. So in February of 2020, we went to a conference and announced the complete platform. February of 2020. <laughs> yes, March of 2020. No one was buying 900 pound functional trainers. No one was buying sensor platforms. No one was buying LiDAR camera based systems. Fortunately, we had started on the movement tracking system but no one wanted to buy cameras with LiDAR. So what can we do? So <clears throat> as everyone did during the pandemic, I locked myself in a room. And what's great here is, is uh, so I started using P5, JS, ML5, and TensorFlow and watching a ton of Coding Train videos. How many of you have seen Coding Train? If you have not seen Coding Train, just go to YouTube and Google and search for Coding Train. You, you'll love it. So, but I had to. <laughs> it's been a while uh, since I had done, you know, trigonometry. So I had to like relearn some things about math, and because uh, our lidar systems were all quaternion based, so we had to learn a whole bunch of new things. But we built a ton of proof of concepts. Like, could we even do this? Could we take a two-dimensional PoseNet system? and start mapping that and do the same kinds of outcome mapping that we did with these, these massive devices and sensors and LiDAR cameras. While we were doing that, uh, we realized uh, Apple was releasing, Apple was releasing uh, iOS 14 at the time. So we were building proof of concepts that spring Apple announced body pose estimation in iOS 14. We, we know Apple normally releases in September, so we had the summer to build a system that was using sort of that better model than PoseNet. Uh, meanwhile, the Air Force wanted this system, and they wanted to be able to continue on with their performance training. So uh, Apple released, I believe it was September 14th, October 1st, we went into production with the Air Force. So we were ready to go with a Swift application on a tablet over that time period. So all of that equipment and sensors that we had built over that period of time uh, are now in a storage unit. If anyone needs anything, let me know. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, but that wasn't the solution we wanted because our goal is personalized measured care anywhere, anytime, and on any device. Well, being on iOS 14 with body pose estimation didn't allow us to do that. So there's this guy on the internet, uh, besides coaching train, uh, that uh, named Jason, who publishes a lot of stuff. 
And so we had gotten in contact with Jason and said, here's what we're trying to do. We started with PoseNet. Is there anything that you can do to help us? And Jason introduced us to a research team, actually three research teams with inside Google. And one of those research teams was doing almost what we were doing or trying to do, but they had no downstream consumer for that product. So a lot of, I look at a lot of what I've, I've watched today and you know, there's, there's frameworks and technologies and languages being built. It's like, but it's the downstream consumer organizations like ours that really benefit from the work that you're doing. So uh, we worked with uh, that research team for about eight months. They would ship us a model. We would try it in our system. We would give them, here's the exercises or activities that work. Here's the ones that didn't. Here's why they didn't, like ankle tracking and sort of body occlusion and some of those kind of things. There was a lot of stuff that we went back and forth on. Meanwhile, we had built a bunch of downstream models that allowed us to understand, hey, that person's standing, they're facing the camera, they're turned to the left, they're turned to the right, they're sitting, they're supine, they're sidelined. So we would take essentially the inference data and be able to train downstream models to understand what was going on with that human at any given time. All right. So uh, now, woo, uh, so now we have a platform that is web-based. We can send a link to any patient, they will onboard, that we will their PT, whatever their PT has them do, we can count their reps, we can show them the ROM gauge, we can walk them through both rep oriented or rep counted activities as well as time counted. We can measure different parts of their body. We can do safety, like in that last one, when he fell over, we stopped the, the test. So we can do both assessments and we can do ac actions. So we have about 500 motion track exercises on the system right now, and about 6,500 other activities on the system that our PTs can use in order to prescribe care to patients who are recovering from any of those uh, uh, issues that they have. So that's what we have right now. That's what we are. So we treat patients, our PTs treat patients using that platform. So you would have a, con a connection with one of our PTs. They would assess you, they would then send out a plan, you would do that plan, and, and that's the system we have. Meanwhile, the Air Force wasn't done. They wanted to do performance things. So the Air Force wanted us to go further because no one's ever happy. Uh, they wanted to track velocity. So if you think about this, so they wanted, they, in fact, this is the uh, Olympic weightlifting team for the Air Force out of Velsec, Germany. So we got to go to Germany, that was cool. Um, but we would work with them and we would do, uh, like think about this, we have to do velocity tracking with a pose estimation model in near real time. This is all, this is all on device. We are not shipping anything off device. This is all on the web, all right? So uh, we did. So. When you normally measure velocity, you're normally measuring, there's two physical devices you could use. One is an encoder, a tether, that you actually can tether to a bar, and when that tether moves, we would capture data. The other one is a LIDAR-based system, so we would shoot a laser to the ground and measure the laser movement. And then ours, which is a bunch of machine learning model, running on a web browser. That's crazy, right? All right, so this is actually um, a live demo well, it's recorded, but you understand. Uh, it's a live demo of all three of those against each other with the exact same exercise. So we had to prove that it worked, and we did. So the graphs on the screen are the optical sensor against the tether against our implementation of just body pose estimation and a bunch of downstream models. As you can see, our inference is uh, uh, about 30 frames a second, so we're getting about 30 samples a second, but we can still give you all the velocity tracking and power tracking that the Air Force wanted to get out of this particular thing. So that team was happy, and that's what they're using. The reason why that team needed something, by the way, uh, was because even though they're, they're in Germany and they're the Olympic weightlifting team, those are still airmen that get deployed. And they wanted to make sure that those airmen were still doing the exercises uh, while they were deployed. And they, they weren't degrading in performance just because they were actually on a deployment. So 
This allowed them to actually track from a coach's perspective that those, those airmen are actually doing their exercises, their velocities are still there, their work is still there, um, but that's what the, our underlying system. So, so what are we now? Like we, t we talked a little bit about uh, you know, the cost of healthcare. So we've treated patients from 12 to 90 from a demographic, so it's not just, oh, they have to be performance athletes. Um, we, we have a, uh, about an 85% cost reduction in the cost of care. So when you look at that $600 billion number, we can reduce that by 85%. So the average traditional PT is $1,000 a month. We can cut that down to about $150 a month with our PTs and then our platform because we're web-based. Right? There's, no, there's no cost. Like uh, once, I, once I give you the access to the application, all the inference is happening on your device and you're just giving us outcomes of the work that you did. And then our PTs can adjust your plan, just like when we had the large machines. So we also have this, the other distinction, uh, which you guys should be proud of, is we are the first FDA class two medical device, which means we're allowed to take human body sensor data and give it to a, a physician and they can make diagnostic changes based on that. So we're the first web AI based system that was able to become a class two medical device. So thank you. thank you. But that wasn't us, that was you guys. I mean, that's everyone, everyone who's supporting these kinds of, of technologies is what's driving us forward. So, uh, don't sit, don't clap yet. Uh, so there is one thing that we talk about in engineering and, and our teams and our ML teams is uh, if you can't solve the problem you have using web AI, you're probably not trying hard enough. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.